Hey guys, welcome back to Twitchy Plays Kerbal Space Program, the career mode you have all been waiting to follow. Of course, I mean, who who wouldn't want to follow this? Now, today, I promised you a flyby of the moon, and by Jove, we are going to do that, even though it only gets us a paltry eight science. But, we have plans for that as well. So let's grab that, and we'll figure out what we can do afterwards, or I will figure out what I can do afterwards when I'm not trying to dictate what I'm going to do here. Now there are a few things that I also want to do to make sure this moon, land, uh, moon flyby goes as smooth as possible. The first off is to upgrade the launch pad. Like we're not going to do it on a, what was it, a 30 ton, an 80 ton vessel, but, but 140 we can definitely do it. And if we come in here, now my immediate like impulse was to buy the bigger fuel tank and maybe the LV-909s because you know that gives us all sorts of like help when we're out in out in orbit and stuff like that and this means we can reduce the part count down quite a bit but the thing that i really really want is obviously i mean obviously the thermometer and some extra batteries because like the batteries we can keep in reserve so that we can do some maneuvering when we're up in in space and the thermometer well it's extra science right boom okay we're gonna do that great uh so i am gonna get on with making a mission and i will be well making a mission making a uh a vessel and i will be back with said vessel okay so i've gone and created my vessel but there was definitely one thing that i forgot to do whilst we were out here at the kerbal space center and that was most definitely to uh, upgrade our astronaut complex here so we can do an eva like an eva is going to give us access to so many more sciences uh, that's definitely what we want okay so we're going to go over to the launch pad here and we are definitely not going to have jebediah cameras for the stars um we're going to do month flyby gonna get rid of jeb and put val in the sea uh, i know we could possibly use jeb to get some get some star points and stuff like that that's what i'm calling sp from now on uh, but as we all know jeb is only for tourism nowadays so when we when we go and send the tourists up we will do so uh, and if i i really would have liked to have got bob and bill in on this as well like got, got some more um command cop capsules on there the, but my part limit is currently interfering with that that said it's a really cheap flight and i could go and upgrade my vab nah, nah, nah we're just gonna go we're just gonna go God, look at the majestic stack that we have here. Hopefully this will all be good. It is our first Munula shot, so anything could happen. I've not really tested this craft, so let's press uh, let's press space and get going, right? Unfortunately, it was around this point that I actually discovered a massive design flaw in this particular craft. Hey, it's Twitchy from the future here. Or the past for you. I don't know, these whole sort of relative time coordinate things are always so difficult when you don't have a flux capacitor to sort everything out for you. But yes, look at the wobble in my machine there. It is absolutely horrendous. So we go back and do a little bit of revert. I turn 90 degrees just in case it's kind of the direction I want my rocket to fall over that, that is the problem. But of course, the moment we start doing any manoeuvring whatsoever, this this phallic section in the middle there really just starts to wobble around and, and it becomes all uncontrollable. And I'm not really sure how to deal with it there at this present moment in time. Or the past moment in time. Y you know what I mean. Of course, no testing process would be complete without a missed stage leading to a horrific series of explosions ripping its way up the vessel but mysteriously leaving the crew capsule alive. That's great. Thankfully, it didn't take far too long for me to suddenly realise, hey, maybe it's the fact that we've only got two tail fins on there, so there isn't any sort of stabilisation into the other axis. Uh, so I threw three on there, and it started going really well. Indeed, we made it up out of the top of the atmosphere and started our circularisation burn. Circularisation burn went well. Unfortunately, when we started going to the moon, we only made it this far. And uh, that, I don't know about you guys, but that's not close enough to the moon for me. But anyway, after much stress, gnashing of teeth and just pulling my hair out, we eventually got to this sort of launch system here, which I think kind of went all right. Uh, my main aim at the early parts of the flight was to try and get up to about 300 meters per second and to be roughly facing at about 10 degrees off a of vertical. Uh, this is because when you're traveling at those sort of speeds, gravity can't actually pull your nose down fast enough to make major deviations in your in your trajectory or at least this is what i've found and then from that point on you can just go without any sas whatsoever because you are following that point along and gravity is helping you round until eventually you reach to the point where you are counting 65 66 67 i reckon we're going to run out of fuel very very shortly um in fact there we go boom i'm just going to drop this stage here and then we will deal with this as as we can um in fact, that was perfect. I am so happy with that. That that there are many ways that could have gone wrong, and there are many ways it could have gone better. But I think uh, as 
as flights go with the oh wow look at how much that's not dealing with it as flights go in the this new Kerbal space program with this messed up aerodynamics i say messed up i know they're they're closer to reality but with these very crazy with aerodynamics i think that was as close to as a perfect flight we're gonna get at least i'm gonna get and look we we're only came from there it's amazing how quick it happens isn't it I, amazing okay so we're getting closer to apple apps uh what we're looking for is about 10 seconds to apple apps unfortunately we don't have any sort of time delineation on here so we're just gonna have to deal with it as we see uh of course i have not started the engine yet so let's get going with that and, and let's see what happens possibly pointed still a little bit too too far upwards um let's, let's just kill it a bit uh i'm gonna spend a lot of time just kind of feathering my throttle going for, well i say feathering but yeah feathering going go full throttle not full throttle full throttle dead you know stuff like that um basically i don't want my apple apsis to carry up too high before our periapsis comes out of the uh, of the surface of the planet um though i may have done it a little bit too too conservative there but i hear there's a lot of that going around at the moment ah uh, political joke okay so let's um let's wait until the moon comes up above the horizon we've still got half of, half a tank of fuel left this should be hopefully enough um I hope so. I, I really do hope so. If we come up here for nothing, I'm, I'm going to be quite vexed. You know, it takes a lot of effort, a lot of money, a lot of plot, a lot of planning to get this sort of stuff done. And you know, if we're just going to do it to come back down in the first orbit, oh, that's not good. It's not good at all. Okay, so we're waiting for the standard old school procedure of just waiting for the moon to come above the horizon. Uh, those of you that were with me last season would know that I've become quite an expert at this particular thing. Like, if you if you want to get to the moon, this is the way to do it. Wait until the moon is just above the horizon and then just throttle up. Uh, it looks like you'll miss when you're on the way over there because, believe it, many a times I have been quite quite worried that I'm going to miss the, miss the moon. We, we've got it wrong. But if we just aim for something like oh look at this five six seven let's slow it down it's gonna it's gonna just suddenly creep up on us and we're gonna like no eight nine ten ten point five brilliant of course whilst the altitude was absolutely spot on i was a little bit worried about this inclination here uh i did do a little bit of a messing around but before i wasted all of my fuel i did a quick save uh, and then decided to see what would happen just from this okay so this is the first time we have left the close orbit of Kerbin on this particular save. Let's let's watch it happen uh, in close to real time. The problem, of course, as always, is the sun is in a really awkward position. It would be nice to have it a little bit. I know I'd like to be able to watch Min uh, watch Kerbin here as we're drifting away. Unfortunately, all we can really watch is the silhouette of my spaceship as we watch the silhouette of the planet also come across. Uh, you know, this is the way of things when we're in space. It's a way of things within space. It's a great shame. It's a great, great shame. Okay, so we're coming in, coming in fairly fast, and slowing down all the time, as is the way with these things. I, oh, I've got a small feeling we're going to miss. That that would be most vexing, most vexing. Okay, well here we go. We're going to see what's going to happen here. Hopefully the moon will catch us. The moon has caught us. Okay, the first thing that I'm really not happy about is the way that the moon's going to try and throw us out up high. Uh, the second thing is the fact that. Uh, yeah, no, very high. Okay, well, all right. Let's just see how it runs. We are, we are here. We are in the the upper, upper sphere of influence. Let, let's get some science done. Of course, let's bring back the uh, the UI that enables us to do the science. Orbital misgivings aside, we are here to get some science, and there are five experiments we can do up here. We've got obviously the materials bay, the goo canister, the thermometer, which I'm not going to call a temperature scope this time, and EVA and crew reports. And, you know, that's pretty easy to do. I obviously then got Valentina out to collect all the data just in case we smashed everything up and the only thing to survive would be the capsule, which is quite a common state of affairs in this game, let's be honest. Okay, what I'd really like to do here at this point is kind of push my, my trajectory round this way a little bit more so that we're coming back in that way. I'm not sure if that's going to cause me any trouble. I mean, we've got it quick saved. Let, let, let's, let's go and see what happens. Let's go and see what happens. We can kick round, come back out. We didn't look at the tiny orbit there. Okay, seven seven million meters. So yeah, seven million meters. It's a long way. It's a long way. But hopefully, when we're up at our apple apps here, what we can do is point our way retrograde. Retrograde. Now, obviously, I didn't look too much at the moon at this point. A uh, little, bit, little bit, little bit ashamed of that. I could have really looked. But we are. We will be going back 
relatively shortly. Okay, we're just going to burn all our fuel, basically. Try, try and get back home. Five, four, ah, uh, well, that's annoying. That's very annoying. Uh, let's get out and push. No, I'm not going to get out and push. Oh, that that really would. Oh, this really blows. I hate doing this. All right, let. What 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 is our thing at the moment? Four point one. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a bit of a nudge, and if we make an appreciable difference, then I will carry on. If we don't then I'm just not going to because I've had enough of this and I'm going to quick say, uh, quick load. Whilst Valentina Kerman was out there doing her absolute best to try and push this engine nozzle forwards to get, get our periaps down as low as possible, I was also musing to myself about how we could do this better if we were to quick load. And of course, my plan was just to like not go quite so close to the moon. I'm going to bring my Apple apps down a little bit when we try it again. Maybe down to 10 kilometers or so, somewhere like that. Retrograde. Okay, we want to pull it down to maybe 10 kilometers, I think, maybe. Maybe. We'll, we'll see. I also want to be pointed ever so northwards, um, if that's at all possible. So let's turn the retrograde off. Which way's north? It's just over this way a little bit, okay? Just so we can pull ourselves up a little bit. Uh, and we want to be pulling it down, I don't know, I said 10. Let's go with 9.8. 9.8 8 sounds good. We've got a quick save, so once again, let's just fire our way up there. This time I decided I wanted to watch the moon right up until the shadow of curbing passed across me. I was like, oh, maybe we can watch the sunrise, but but no, that didn't happen. Then, whilst approaching the moon, I was really worried that our inclination was too great and our Apple apps too low to actually get us within the sphere of influence for the moon's gravity to take hold. And when I went past the Apple apps, I was really worried. But thankfully, the speed of the moon going around the planet made it, it caught up with us and we could just let ourselves coast through its sphere of influence. Uh, it's always weird to think that when we're doing this, it's actually the moon rushing past us rather than us going down past the moon, or at least that's what it would be in a real physical system uh, once again we had to get out and get all the science because obviously we quick saved it before we got the science and had to reload back before that point so we had to go through the whole procedure again getting out making sure all the science was safe and now I had the worry that maybe I was a little bit too far around my orbit to efficiently bring my peri apps down and make a nice little aero break so we could bring the apple apps down to make a landing as is the standard procedure during aero braking okay so up at the moon sphere of influence i didn't bother getting out to collect all the science and make everything safe because i wanted to make sure that we were actually going to be returning to kerbin i didn't want a scenario like last time when we were just too far away and then we wasted all the time getting out and walking around and collecting everything because whilst this has been sped up in places and it seems quite short like 20 minutes or so this actually took me uh, it was over two days to to get this recorded properly what with all the the, the beginning testing phases and stuff so this is why some of the commentary, some of the live commentary anyway, sounds a little bit flat, if you will. I, I don't think I sounded too flat, but you can definitely hear me thinking rather than talking. But with all the science collected and restowed in the thing, obviously the uh, the crew report coming in and out was always a bit of an issue. But once all that had been dealt with, we're going to time warp our way back down there because we had already got our parry apps low enough. Talking of parry apps, so it turns out I actually had enough fuel to like cool what, what height I wanted my parry apps at. And I decided to go for 40 kilometers this time, mainly just to see what, it, what the heating's like at that depth. I have all the stuff on me to be able to go down deeper, but I, I wanted to see if it was good enough. See, uh, to see if it would actually like drag me down deep enough into the atmosphere to, to actually bring me back in one one pass uh, and we're going to find out right now what that is all about so we're coming in nice and fast nice and hot and we're going to start shedding speed i'm giving thought to whether to fire my engines whether to uh discharge this little tank on the bottom here um i have made a landing once before with all this stuff on the bottom of a top mounted parachute like that and let's just say it didn't end incredibly well in fact it ended with valentina's death which is not great that's not really what you want in a in a career mode well it's not what i want in a career mode i'm particularly looking to keep hold of at least these uh, orange suits if not all of my kerbals I, it's, it'll be a sad day the day that i actually kill a kerbal something very bad will have to happen because you know i'm quite good on the reaver and uh, the, the the quick save okay so after the initial pass first bit of good news is I did not blow up my batteries but the second bit of not quite so good news is the fact that I didn't pull down my Apple apps far enough to actually bring me down for a landing. Now this is kind of alright because it turns out that I hadn't quite got my got my landing return um, spot on and indeed we were overshooting the 
Kerbal Space Centre by quite a bit, uh, quite a, quite a few kilometres, and I, I was a little bit vexed about that. But my Apple Apps was not like insanely high, and indeed we got to watch a sunset and a sunrise from Kerb in orbit, which is always quite nice. And now we're coming down over the top of the desert, which uh, always fills me with hope. Actually, whenever I see us entering the atmosphere somewhere close to the desert, I would have preferred if we'd entered it, entered the atmosphere a little bit further back. Um, I, I know we're kind of going to be coming down somewhere near the space center. Now, what I'm doing here is just trying to see if spinning up will help me sort of distribute the heat around the things that are sticking out on top. Now, I, I've always seen that in the in the update notes, it says that parts further down the vessel will include parts further up the vessel. But one thing that I have noticed is this does not really hold true. Uh, you will see that like there are many parts everywhere, uh, including both the batteries and the scientific goo canister there. But still, we are building up heat. And it doesn't matter which way I seem to face my vessel, it just carries on building up heat. Which, um, yeah, it's not, it's not really ideal. In the words of Scott Manley, landing might be a good spot for old me to take over. Oh, that was exciting. I was kind of hoping that the spinning round would stop that exploding, but you know, whatever happens, happens. Uh, the ablative cover is taking a little bit of a hit, but not too much. And look how close we are to the space center. That extra pass really did a lot of good for us there. All right, I'm going to pop a parachute now. It seems like the best place to do it. Um, and yeah, I'm, well, I'm, I'm well impressed here. We've come down upon the same continent, not just on the same continent, but indeed the same peninsula when, when viewed from space. Uh, so this is pretty good. Okay, we're coming down relatively hard. Obviously, the uh, parachute's going to have to do their work here. I, what I should have done is put the stack separator in between the capsule and the science module, uh, and then we wouldn't have had to have brought this down as well, and we could have just, just brought the capsule, which would have been... Um, I don't, know. I don't know if that, that would have made me decelerate faster or, or what. Um, this is, looks very dangerous. Looks very dangerous. Looks very dangerous. What is going on? Oh my gosh. I've got to say, guys, I don't really like these uh, these new parachute mechanics. It, it just seems so, like once you're used to the, the, the automatic, I'm just going to stop here having the this slow open up and, and and oh it's just it's so scary it looks like all sorts of things are going to happen to ah oh you know what Valentina's is going to get out and grab a surface sample because that's going to get us some science right no surface samples oh that's rubbish all right we'll take an eva report from there okay um we're going to grab we're going to climb and we're going to board oh i hit the wrong button we're gonna grab. We're gonna board. Okay, let's recover the vessel. Car oh, wow. As always, guys, that that was about three or four times as difficult as I was expecting. But look, look at all these ribbons that Valentina's got here. That's amazing. What have we got? Multiple missions ri ribbons. So she's been on five or more missions. Has she? I didn't. I didn't realise that. She's researched a whole load of science. Uh, she's got the first Kerbin EVA rib ribbon. I, I would have thought I'd have done that with the with the, the plane, but there you go, I did it bad. Uh, the first curb in EVA in zero atmosphere uh, and around the MUN. Uh, we've got the first EVA in space and a dangerous EVA. Why we were not in a stable orbit. That must have been when we were in the um, escape trajectory from the moon. Okay, and what have we got all of this lot here? Look at it all. This just science. Science coming out my wazoo. Uh, we've got the parts, 96.4. Would have been nice to put down actually on top of the launch pad and got 100%, but there we go. And uh, Valentina got herself 2 XP. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this exciting nun flyby. Oh, my God. What, what effort was put into that? Uh, and I will see you next time when we're going to do something else. I, I'm not sure. Possibly some tourism, as Jeb's not been out. Possibly going to land on the moon. Uh, we've got a whole lot of science to spend. It'll be exciting, guys. I'll see you then. Bye!